Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Guilford Community Church. This is the first Sunday of the month and as is our tradition, we gather at the end of the service around the Lord's table, a table open to everyone here. If you are seated near the center of the aisle, please sign our registration book. If you're visiting, we'd love to know that you are here today. And then following our service, please join us downstairs in our fellowship hall for coffee hour. And Cindy will be down there with a sign-up sheet for Old Home Day. That's the last Friday and Saturday of August, and we need lots of helping hands. And then Barbara Harris's memorial service is next Saturday, August 13th at 1 o'clock. But starting at 1245, the Portsmouth Brass Quintet will be playing for the first 15 minutes from 1245 to 1 o'clock. And if you're planning on coming, I know you'll want to get here a little bit early so you can enjoy that music. And then speaking of Barbara, we do welcome Martha and Don Dolben. Mar Martha's going to be playing today, but she's also going to say a word or two to, to us. Thank you so much, Michael, and good morning, everybody. Um, Michael asked a question a while back, um, which kind of lodged in my heart. He said, what can the church do more to serve? And I was thinking about that this morning. I wanted to thank you, Michael, for that question. I think it's so important to live with good questions, and that seems like a great one. And um, recently I heard the phrase, what you appreciate, appreciates. So I just wanted to take this moment to appreciate this church. I've been, uh, you know, I cry easily, and that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really appreciating this church as we've been preparing Mom's memorial service, and um, this morning I said to Don, you know, <laughs> I saw on the website here, the church website yesterday, they have a lineup of musicians for the summer, and guess what, I'm one of them. <laughs> I don't really define myself as a musician very often, even though I do spend a lot of time practicing the piano, but I'm not a professional, and I do appreciate the chance to play for you folks here, and that's one thing I wanted to appreciate this morning. Thank you, Carolyn, for the opportunity. And I also um, am so grateful for the church's support of the work in Uganda that I've been doing for 30 years. We're building schools and um, educating women. It changes the lives of people in extraordinary ways. And this church has been supporting that work. And I'm just so grateful for that. So for the music, for um, the support of the good things in the world, and for a place to call home. Um, where I grew up, this is where I um, did youth fellowship as a teenager, and uh, it's a wonderful source of continuity in my life, so I want to thank you all for that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Martha. And I guess I'm, I guess I'm going to play a little Mendelssohn for you now. Thank you.
Thank you, Martha, and we appreciate your music. Please join me now in a word of prayer. Having journeyed apart through the ups and downs of this week, we gather this morning with intention. We come for many different reasons. We come to see friends, to experience a sense of peace and hope and rest for the demands of life. We come to hear something challenging or encouraging. May our time together meet the needs of our hearts May we offer what we have to each other and receive what we truly need. May this always be a place where the desire for beauty and the care for each other flourishes, that we might be faithful followers of Jesus whose words we continue to repeat when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I'll stand as we sing together hymn number 21, God reigns over all the earth.
Our scripture reading today is from Hebrew, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars of the heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confess that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Here ends the reading. I want to preface this song by saying I chose it a couple of months ago, not realizing how appropriate it would be today. So Michael, this one's for you. The name of the song is called When I'm Back on My Feet Again. break these chains around me gonna learn to fly again maybe hard maybe hard but I'll do it when I'm back on my feet again soon these tears will all be drying Soon these eyes will see the sun Might take time, might take time, but I'll see it When I'm back on my feet again When I'm back on my feet again I'll walk proud down this street again And they'll all look at me again And they'll see that I'm strong Gonna hear the children laughing Gonna hear the voices sing Won't be long, won't be long till I hear it When I'm back on my feet again Gonna feel the sweet light of heaven Shining down its light on me One sweet day, one sweet day I will feel it When I'm back on my feet again When I'm back on my feet again I'll walk 
prowl down this street again and they'll all look at me again and they'll see that I'm strong and I'm not gonna crawl again I will learn to stand tall again and they'll all look at me again and I'll learn to be strong soon these tears will all be drying soon these eyes will see the sun won't be long, won't be long till I see it when I'm back on my feet again when I'm back on my feet again I'll be back on my feet again Thank you, Stacy. An even better song would have been, I'll be back on my bike again, and if the children will come forward, we'll have our time together. Well, good morning. I, I don't think I know your name. What's your name? Kyle? Josiah. Oh, Josiah? Josiah, like in the Bible. It's a great name. And this is Cece and Olivia. We're glad to have you here today. One of the things Mrs. Dolben said was to appreciate the things we appreciate. What are some things you appreciate? Your parents. Good answer, huh? Anything else? Your family? Your family. Here are some things I appreciate. I appreciate my cane. <laughs> Never thought I would fall off my, yeah, my, but they, they took my cast off on Thursday. and They gave me this brace, so I was kind of excited about that. I had a bicycle accident, and I broke my hip. There's four pins in my hip, and I broke my wrist, but I think I'm doing okay. And I, I appreciate the church family, all the calls and the cards I've gotten, people cutting our grass. I'm going to, you know, even after I get better, I'm going to milk this for a little bit longer. <laughs> and I, I especially, I especially appreciate Cindy. She does all the stuff that I used to do around the house, all the stuff she's always done around the house, and... She has to take care of her 62-year-old big baby. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Let's give Cindy a little round of applause. <laughs> so often the caregiver is underappreciated. But if it weren't for Cindy, I probably wouldn't be here this morning. So today I want you to think about the things that you appreciate. Try to come up with a list of about 10 family and friends, our church, our school, that, that we live in one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. Do you know that? Guilford is one of the most beautiful. Josiah, where do you live? You live in Connecticut? Yeah, our, our daughter lives in Connecticut. Yeah, that's, Connecticut's a beautiful place too, isn't it? So we're so lucky, we're so privileged to live in a beautiful place, and I hope we appreciate just how good life has been for all of us. Thanks for coming up.
I do have a couple of people I'd ask you to keep in your thoughts and prayers and to maybe ask how you might help. Joan Stevenson has surgery tomorrow afternoon at Dartmouth Hospital. And then Diane Anthony's granddaughter, Peyton James, has requested that we keep her friend, Sophia Vizen. She has surgery tomorrow on her spleen at Mass General. And uh, Peyton has asked that we keep her little friend in our thoughts and prayers. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. In this very moment of life, may we be sustained in the silence of our own thoughts and prayers. Let us quiet the anxieties, the actions of this past week. May we claim the silence of this sacred place and let it be to us a friend. We are grateful to be able to enjoy another day for the chance to live fully, to love abundantly, to be all that we can be. For such vivid reminders of the great elements of life, we are grateful. The fact that the sun bathes the earth with energy, the very energy it needs to be sustained. Green life generating oxygen for our life's breath. Water that flows within and all around giving us sacred drink. The fertile earth upon which we walk. The land and soil which bears forth our daily bread. All things different yet connected, all things sacred and instilled with grace and beauty. So let us unleash this day the sparks of life planted in each of us, in our gifts and our talents, our unique skills, our language, gestures, smiles, laughter and tears. For we long to have elastic hearts and open minds. And may the life that is so strong within each of us be a source of life and love for those around us, those who might be struggling overwhelmed, grieving, those battling this morning. So let us right, right now open ourselves to the very source of all things that life may indeed flow in and through us. This is our prayer. Amen. And now stand as we sing Faith of the Martyrs, hymn number 381.
There are a handful of questions I don't like to be asked. Questions I don't like to be asked because I'm never certain if you'll like my answer. Questions like, who did I vote for? <laughs> Then one I really hate, who picked those horrible hymns? <laughs> But I think the question I hate the most, and I've been asked it a lot of times and in a lot of different places, I've been asked it on the golf course on our first night in Switzerland, and several times recently when I was in the hospital or at the doctor's office. Now, back in the day, about 15, 16 years ago, I was playing golf with Warren Hutchins, and just before we teed off, someone asked if they could join us. We made quick introductions and teed off, and everything was fine until we got to about the seventh hole. And the person we were playing golf with, I think his name was Dave, he said, What kind of work do you do, Michael? That was one of those slightly awkward moments because to this point, Dave's language had been rather foul. A, a few, God, when he hit a bad, bad shot, and a couple of off color jokes. And if you want to let the air out of the room, just tell someone you're a minister. <laughs> See what happens. So I told him I'm a minister. He rolled his eyes, a big smile filled his face, and he laughed, and he said, me too. <laughs> But I could tell he wasn't really serious, and so I repeated my answer, and then he said, I used to go to church. My mom made me, but I lost my faith a long time ago. We didn't talk much after that, but throughout the round, I wondered about that question. Should I have, could I have said something? I lost my faith a long time ago. A similar thing happened when we were in Switzerland. The first night, our group, group gathered for dinner and drinks, and we went around the room introducing ourselves, sharing our travel experiences, and talking about the line of work we were in. And until I spoke, the room was filled with lots of laughter. And then I made my great reveal. And believe it or not, a couple of people asked for refunds. We didn't come to Europe to spend the week with a minister. Now, my experience at the hospital, Lakes Region Concord Hospital, was a little different. You see, when I was asked that question and told them I was a minister, they simply asked, where? And the mere mention of the Guilford Community Church almost universally evoked this response. I don't go to church but I've heard good things about yours. Sadly, people have such mis misconceptions about churches. They think we're all alike, but churches come in more flavors than Baskin Robbins has ice cream. And close to 30% of people who used to go to church only a decade ago no longer do. And clergy, clergy used to be universally respected. Today, they're valued only slightly more highly than car salesmen and politicians. <laughs> so too, the word faith. It's a word that is greatly misunderstood. People think it's about religious belief. Early this past spring, on a couple of different occasions, men from the community, I didn't really know them, but they knew of us. They came to me with the same statement. Michael, I think I'm losing my faith. I just can't do church anymore. So how would you, Martha, you can think about this, how would you respond to those statements? I'm losing my faith. I can't do church anymore. Now, there were about 16 years before that round of golf with Warren and those conversations in my office. So I've had some time to think about this, and my answer might surprise you. It certainly surprised my visitors. But when I began my career as a minister, I made a promise to myself that I would never, ever, never, ever say things I didn't believe. And I hope I've been true to that. So here's what I said. I, too, lost my faith a long time ago. And it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. 
I lost faith in that elementary school God and discovered something larger and more affirming and empowering. At first, they didn't know what to, what to say. But they asked this question, well, how do you do your job? So I tried to explain exactly what I meant. You see, about 35 years ago, in seminary, I lost my faith. And it didn't happen overnight, but gradually, I realized that most of what I believed, most of what I had been taught in Sunday school, no longer made sense to me or the world as I was experiencing it. So I lost that childish faith that pictures God as a bearded dude in the sky, a God in control of all things. I lost that kind of faith that says we must take the Bible literally, the kind of faith that says if I pray hard enough, do all the right things, I won't fall off my bicycle. Life will go well for me and those I love. I lost that kind of faith that said, my faith is real, but I'm not so certain about yours. That kind of faith that is at odds with science, that doesn't take things like the Big Bang or evolution seriously. I lost my faith that said I could never ask a question, that doubt was horrible. And when I lost that faith, I was befuddled and it was painful. And it came, took some time to come to a new sense of faith, one that I could own unashamedly. So let me tell you a little bit about the faith I have this morning. It's a faith that enriches my life, a faith that inspires me to be the best version of myself, faith in myself. This faith of mine is not about believing a bunch of things that may or may not happen or things that can con contradict the laws of nature. But it does leave room for the possibility that there's more to reality than we can see with our eyes. That there's a depth and dimension to life that can't be captured or seen under a microscope. There is a mysterious element to life woven through the universe. Mine is a faith that embraces hopeful uncertainty, that it accepts paradox, it takes seriously the idea that God is love, or maybe even better, love is God. Can't prove that, though. But I do believe there's a power, a presence at work in the universe nudging all of us to be our best loving selves. It's a faith in what it means to be human that understands life as a gift not to be wasted or squandered, a faith that asserts life has gifted all of us in unimaginable ways. And that the human mind is powerful and capable of such wondrous or awful things. Ultimately, mine is a this world affirming faith. A faith that doesn't pray or look for rescue from other worlds or other places. A faith that insists that my choices have consequences. And when I make bad ones, I may pay a price. But there is also an inexplicable, inexplicable grace at work in our universe. I have faith in Cindy. That means I trust that she loves me, that she has my best interests at heart. It's a trust of faith that has grown over time. I have faith in all of you. And then I have faith in myself, which is probably the most complicated thing of all. For I have lived with myself longer than I've lived with anyone else. And I have probably let myself down more than anyone else has. But I have confidence that when I set my mind and heart to it, I can accomplish all the things that are important to me, like being a good father, a good wife, a good friend, a good pastor. And then I have faith in all of you that you'll keep your promises. I trust that I don't need to be perfect, nor do you need to be perfect. I have confidence, too, that when we work together, we can do greater things than any of us could accomplish alone. In sacred mathematics, one plus one is always way more than two. And faith is not some small religious thing that I pull out on Sunday mornings, but it is the very fabric of our existence. Without it, we couldn't live well. 
There would be no such thing as families or communities or nations if we didn't have faith and, faith and trust in each other. We plant trees in the sp spring and bulbs in the fall because we have faith in the universe's abundant life. And we know that what we do today influences tomorrow. I appreciate the insight of Rabbi Kushner who wrote, my faith is less about God, about who God is or what God does, and more about who we are and what we do because of what God means to us. Then he wrote, we don't go to church or synagogue to find God. God may indeed be more accessible in nature on a sunny day, but we go to church or synagogue to find other people who are looking for what we are looking for, and together we find it, and we become something greater than our isolated, solitary selves. Faith is ultimately a verb, not a noun, and it's closely related to words like awe and wonder and love. And it's demonstrated best by how we live and not what we say we believe. And the point is not what we believe or where we go to church, but who we are becoming. Who we are becoming. Hopefully the best version of ourselves. And that's never discovered in correct theology, but in the love, the love that we express by the things that we do. Amen. We come just as we are. We come to the table knowing that old story that goes something like this, that on the night that Jesus would be betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, my body will be broken like this. And when the supper was over, he took a cup filled with ordinary wine, said, this cup symbolizes a new covenant sealed with my life. When you drink it, do so, remembering me. So ministering in his name, we offer to you the bread of life. Together, let us take, take the living bread. And now, ministering in the name of the crucified Jesus, but the ever-present, ever-living Christ, we offer to you the cup of the new covenant.
Together, let us taste and know the goodness and love of the Lord. After this supper, the disciples part is singing a psalm. Please stand as we close this service, singing hymn number 411, Praise the Source of Faith and Learning. And now having gathered together for, for worship, let us go forward with a faith that is growing, empowering, and always loving. Amen. <laughs>